Hi, I'm Amy. And hello, I'm Andrea. This is the Right Crowd. So grab a cup of coffee. Or your cup of tea. Actually, this one is my little something on the rocks. Or that. <laughs> and let's get started. All right, Andrea, we are wrapping up Book in a Month this week. Dun, 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 dun. Yay! So for those of you who've been following along, we are on week four which means if you've been following along and doing the homework, you are at the point where you should be 75% through. And uh, this week is all about review. And so you wanna make sure nothing is left hanging. So like sometimes you'll read a book and you'll get to the end and you'd be like, but what happened to Rebecca? Yeah. Right? Or wait, why did they put that knife in their backpack? If like, what was the point of, so that's what this week is about, finding all those spots and making sure that you're not losing, leaving any loose ends. And I really like that she points that out. And um, because that's one of my pet peeves as a reader is that you've invested all of this time in the book and they wrap up the major story or the A story and they sort of wrap up the B story, but they leave all these little things hanging. Like, did she need to know how to speak Greek? I don't know. Is that in the next book? Why did you even bring that up? If it's not going to, if you're not going to wrap that up yep. at the end. And where is the dog? The dog got lost. Did you find the dog? I mean, what? please wrap up all of the little loose ends or make it clear that that's going to be wrapped up in the next book if it's a series. And, and by like the way, that out. if you ever lose a dog in a book and you don't find him safely, I will never read your books again. True that. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> I don't care what happens to all the peoples, but the puppy dogs better come home nicely. Yes. At the end. Nice treats and a warm fire to curl up. Now I'm, I'm wanting to go <laughs> read a nice book where that happens. Some cocoa and then the dog, the dog doesn't get the cocoa, but they get a nice bone in front of the fire and a big comfy cozy fleece. And that's not what this episode is about. This episode is about week four you get our point <laughs> yes yes wrap it up people and let's wrap up week four speaking of yes let's do that okay so um she also points out that this is where your hero and your villain are going to have their final confrontation okay. but but don't hit your readers over the head with it yes i like one of the things that she says make the hero earn the final confrontation with the villain and yep. that's it's it, sometimes you get it you read a book or you see a movie where you know stuff is going to happen and they get to the end and it's like but how did that was you didn't really I need a montage of you learning karate for you to <laughs> kick that guy yeah, so you just saw all of a sudden yeah <laughs> So, um, yeah, and she, some of the week four goals that she has um, in your handy dandy little sheet there are. Um, <gasps> Mine doesn't fall down like that. I know. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the villain reward glance um, that you did a hero reward glance in, I believe it was week three. Um, you're doing a character arc tracker. And we'll talk more about that one. A final obstacle brainstorm. And you're also doing a climax brainstorm. Um, you're doing a theme revelation check, which I still, I struggle with theme. And then a resolution brainstorm and a final story check. So those are some of the things that you're working on in week four. And one of the other things that in the beginning of the, the chapter, she says, um, you have to, it's been a, an, an, an intense three weeks and it has, you're in week four now. Um, and so you have to figure out what your week four goal is because it might not be the same. Maybe you didn't get through all of that. Maybe something came up at work or you know, with your childcare. And so even though it's book in a month, maybe yours is book in six weeks. So don't yeah. beat yourself up, just keep going. The other thing she points out, which as I was reading it, I was like, that is accurate statement. If you pack too many words on a page and there's no break, yeah. like on the page for your readers to have a stopping point, like when you're reading, you're like, okay, I've got, I, I, I've got to stop. Where's the next stopping point? If it's like a page and a half later, 
you're going to lose readers because they're not going to have the time to come back and pick up to read a, you know what I mean? Yeah. So she puts, she, she makes a point to, to say when you're breaking down your paragraphs to make sure that you've formatted it in such a way so that there are frequent breaks. So your reader has uh, an opportunity to step away for a moment and come back. Yeah. White space is your friend. And a lot of people don't need, know that. And that's in fiction as well as nonfiction at work. White space, please use your white space. <laughs> it is a good thing yes. for you for you and for your readers. Um, so I feel like I need to say something. A second ago when you were talking, I, I kind of looked off to the side and, and started smiling. Um, our brown dog, I can't say her name because she's right here and she finally laid down. But our brown dog literally was climbing over the top of the furniture to escape the living room because the living room is full of boxes right now and you can't get around. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how she originally got to the first chair, but she crawled over the top of everything. Oh my get... gosh. You needed to film that for your YouTube channel. <laughs> if I had known she was going to do that. <laughs> okay. Sorry. But I felt like I needed to go back and explain why. And I was like, I was wondering what the face was for. I was like, did I say something wrong? No, no, it was, it was, it was the little brown dog. Okay. Who's now sleeping peacefully. So, all right. So the first day she goes through what all of those pieces that Audrey has said were, she goes through what those look like. And then on day 22, she points out, um, you're going to identify your goal, which is what Audrey had just brought up. But you also need to make sure that the ending of your book, say you're actually ending your book this week, your ending of your book has to have a payoff for the readers. Mm -hmm. You want them to read it and be like, yes, at the end. And yes, where's the next one? If you don't have a payoff for your readers at the end, the likelihood is that they'll be like, well, the next one's not going to have a payoff either. I don't want to read it. So. Even if readers, it's some, it's a, it's a human thing. I don't know. It's, it's a um, subconscious thing. It's part of the way we're made up um, psychologically looking for, to, to looking for patterns and looking for, you know, it, and it, every beginning should have an end. And even if they're little bitty things, those payoffs are important. So I, um, I like that she, uh, she brings that out. And she also talks about in this uh, first day, that you should be keeping your villain motivated. And a lot of writers don't think about that. Um, uh, we talked about that in one of the last episodes about how people write a villain. The villain is the bad guy. He wants to do the bad thing and that's it. Well, that's a, a one dimensional bad guy. You want a three dimensional bad guy that has you know, motivations and um, there, um, I love that quote. I can't remember who says it, but every villain is the hero of their own story. Every character in your book is the hero yeah. of their own story. And um, she gives you some tips for keeping your villain motivated and knowing what your, um, and I have that highlighted here in that uh, first day, um, knowing what your villain's uh, goal is. You should know what their goal is in addition to, um, I mean, it can't just be to, blow up the Empire State Building. It, or, it can't be that or whatever that building's called these days. Um, <laughs> I'm dating myself. It used to be the Empire State, but it can't just be to um, uh, blow up whatever building or to sink the ship. There's some other thing driving them. There's some other thing that motivates them to do the bad, the very bad thing. Right. It reminds me of that theme song to True Blood. <laughs> Sorry, I digress. Which I don't watch so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> um, the other thing is just because he's the villain doesn't mean that his motivation has to necessarily come from a bad place. So he could be motivated by something that happened in his life and he thinks that he's doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So um, keep that in mind. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out, going back to um, making sure that your book has a payoff at the end, make sure the payoff is in alignment with your genre. So if it's a romance, it should be a happily ever after at the end. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so if it's a if it's a detective series, there should be a, a case closed at the end. Now, if it's a series, it's going to maybe have one case closed while another one opens and leads you into the next book. Yeah. But that first case, or like Bosch, the character um, Harry Bosch, every there's one theme that goes to the whole a, a whole series, right? But each book has its own focus where they bring, where Michael Connolly brings in that original, Harry's reason he got to be a detective, the reason he yeah. does what he does, why he's so focused on certain cases. They bring that up throughout because that's his main motivation, but each book has its own little thing. So if you have a book like that, that's fine. Just make sure that whatever the, the, the main point is of that particular book, that that thing gets wrapped up at the end. Sorry, I was just thinking that Bosch series, Michael Connolly is a master. Of, yes. And I love how he developed that character. That's a great, and yeah. I love, I don't remember how he says it. Is it everyone matters or no one matters? That is just a great- Everyone matters or no one does. Oh my gosh. That's just such a great thing for your hero to have, like their inner guidance. It just- Yep. And a side note for anyone who actually watches Bosch, and if you don't, you should- my dad and brother are both retired law enforcement officers and they both, it's so hard watching cop shows with them because no one gets it right. I used to be a 911 operator and I had a really hard time. There was a nine, yeah. There was a 911 show on back in the nineties mm -hmm. where I was like, oh my gosh, that's not how you do it. No, stop that. So it's like that with my dad. You can't watch a cop show with my dad and brother without them going, that's not how you do it. Bosch is legit. My dad even commented, he goes, I really enjoy it. This guy did his homework. He knows what he's talking about. He follows procedures. So yeah. So if you are normally like, that's not how it works. Watch Bosch. It's how it works. Interesting. So, all right. All right. Ready? There's a little plug for Bosch and Michael Connolly. And yeah, he now is going to owe us some royalties. <laughs> we'll put some links in the show notes. <laughs> yep. Actually, I will because I won't be. It's a good, and they're recording the next series that has nothing to do with Amazon Prime. Okay. All right. Let's finish week four and then we'll chat more about. <laughs> We're okay. both squirreling. Moving <laughs> on. Normally it's just me that's like, oh. <laughs> I'm very squirrely today. I have talked to no one this week except my husband oh, and no. the dogs. Oh, no. So I apologize to all of our watchers and listeners, but um, I have to get all my words out in this half hour. So. All right. Good to know. All right. I'm going to try me. The, you the, have to keep us the on The of ADD week. is going to try and keep us on track. All right. Now we're up to day 23 and the character. Yes, we part. are. I'm and she has that. And I sketched out part of mine because my book is going down there instead of up. But um, that is a fabulous exercise, whether you're a pantser or a plotter, when you are looking back at your book um, to, to plot where your character has ups and downs. And she even has a really nice chart here that I use to help figure it out. And I, I typically on some, most of these, I don't write in the book. I just, I have to do it on paper <laughs> because I, I write bigger. But um, these, are, these are great exercises for tracking your character's arc. So even if you pants, and that is you don't plot, you just write whatever comes out. When you look back and, and read what you've written, um, your character should still have an arc and um, it could actually help you pants, I think. This is me speaking as a recovering pantser. <laughs> so that was day 23. Did you wanna add anything more about the character arc that you're plotting? The only other thing that I highlighted um, was that you want to make sure that you consider how your other characters react to your hero's evolution. Oh, so your hero can't change and there'll be no like outer anything from anybody else in the book. Like it could be conflict. It could be good. It could just be an acknowledgement of, has anyone noticed somehow acknowledge that your hero has changed throughout the book with the other characters in the book? You, if you don't, then it's not going to seem like it actually really happened. There's no acknowledgement. Yeah, that's a good point. And I need to go back and highlight that because I did I did my character arc, but I need, there are other characters, main characters in the book or not main, well, 
there's one protagonist and then there's the other side characters. Um, but that would add more dimension to the book to, to, to make sure I hit when the character is down, what are the other characters doing or feeling? So that's a, a, another great exercise to do. So on day 24, you are looking to develop your story's uh, crucial final obstacle. And so you're writing that out. Um, and she gives you a handy dandy chart. Yes. And um, she says now in the beginning of this, of this exercise, in the beginning of book in a month, uh, you did a light outline and she wants you, you wrote out what your final obstacle was going to be. Now in week four, you are taking that final obstacle that you, you wrote um, all the way back on day, it was day three. I'm sorry, did I say week four? You're in week four, but you wrote the final obstacle on day three back in week one when you did your outline. I don't remember day three, but I'll trust you. <laughs> so now you're going to bring it back up. And she says, because I highlighted it, that likely it's likely um, that your description of your final obstacle was a little vague because you hadn't gotten there yet. You had not written it and you had not written all the stuff to get there. So now you're going to take that and you're going to uh, deepen it and flesh it out and, and so forth. And you're going to write that part. And also your climax. She points out not to make, not to worry about making things difficult for your hero. Like you can stack things up against him. I mean, that's what makes him a hero, right? Yeah. So keep that in mind. And then for your climax, she gives you a handy dandy chart. I like when people, when authors are like, here's what you do now, fill it in. Yeah. Yeah. That's helpful. That's helpful. Um, and even like, I, I always like to talk to the, because pantsers, when they see a book like this, are going to run in the other direction. A lot of them will. But um, even if you're pantsing, um, knowing that you need these parts, like you need the um, note to know what your, is happening in the climax and how the char uh, character is feeling. After you've written that, you can go back and say, did I hit that note? Or um, did I consider the genre, which is part of that, that chart that she has written? Right. So right. I, I think those things, it's, it's helpful um, guidelines or like guide rails to pants within. Yeah. And then at the end of that day, she points out not to second guess yourself too much. Follow the momentum of the scene. So if you're writing a scene and you feel like it needs to go one way, just go that way. You might end up rewriting it because it doesn't work, but basically brain dump, like, get it out because you never know. There may be pieces of that, um, but go ahead and put it out on paper. Like now is not that you're finishing up. Now is not the time to start censoring what you're putting on the paper. And if an idea comes to you that you're like, oh, that's good, but it doesn't fit right here. Make a note somewhere mm -hmm. where you're going to find it right in your notes for the story or whatever, make a note somewhere and then come back to it and see if it fits somewhere in your story, or maybe it's a good idea for the next one. And um, that came up for me when I was uh, writing this. There's at the end of the book, um, the final confrontation between the good guy and the bad guy. Um, she has to call on special skills that I had not mentioned. Like I said, the karate kick. She didn't, well, she's not karate kicking, but um, she calls on sp skills or knowledge that I had not mentioned, but were in her backstory. So they were in my head. I knew that stuff about her but they weren't on the page anyway. But the writer did it. The writer did it. So I did, um, that's a good tip to make notes when you reread your, your ending to see, if, do you need to drop some hints or go back to the very beginning and do some foreshadowing? So she talks about that at the end. Right, yep. Um, the next day we're in day 25 and you are revealing your theme. Um, and of course, she's got a great chart and it's, it breaks it down to, have you brought up your theme? And did you point out your theme in all the steps? Um, because if you have it, and then all of a sudden you get to, a, you want to bring out your theme at the end, your readers are going to be like, that's what the story's about? I didn't know that, right? You want to make sure that even if it's just hints along the way that you pointed out and it's got a chart. It is a handy chart. 
Um, the other part that you're doing on this day, um, or that you did on this day, if you're playing along at home, is you drafted your resolution. And um, one of the things that she says, um, that she mentions, are when you are drafting your resolution, you need to know, how will your hero's world be different at the resolution? After the climax, get to the resolution, how will their world be different? Um, will things be better or worse for your main character? Because it could be worse. Um, if there's a new problem that has come up. So those are some really great, and that's just a taste of some of the really great questions that she asks you to ask about your resolution as you're brainstorming. And I like in the, in the handy dandy chart she has for the rev resolution, she has the plot resolution and the subplot resolution and then the character resolution. So there- Yeah, because you gotta wrap it all up. Yep. Yep. All right. All of it. Uh, we're moving on to day six or day 26 and you just need to keep writing and that's what she um, talks about because you get towards the end week three week four it gets to be harder wrapping up things and um, keeping going keeping yourself motivated and um, one of the other things she talks about is the story promise and um, like if your book started out happy and cheerful and humorous and at the end it's dark and morose <laughs> and it's a melodrama or it's noir, um, you broke a promise. You made a promise to your reader with the first page or that first um, act and you have to make sure that you're maintaining that promise. So you have to go work yourself back and add the humor back into the book or maybe go back to the beginning of the book and add some notes, some notes. Yeah. Yeah of that morose or that, that drama so that it is consistent. Something else, I don't remember if it was this book or another book that I read it in, and I'm gonna say it either way. Um, something to keep in mind is that there are some people who, I don't know if it's a fear of ending the book or um, they just don't want to get to the end, so they will stop writing. Mm -hmm. They will come up with reasons not to make it work. Or I have this idea and I've got to, I'm trying to figure out how to put it in the book. And two years later, they're still writing the book, not because it's an epic and it's 50 gazillion chapters long. Nah, it's a little novella, but they can't seem, they, they don't want to end it, right? Don't be that person if you want people to read your stuff, Right. If you if you're if you're writing because you just want to write, then keep the same story for years, right? If you're writing because you want to have readers and you want to have a following and you want to write backup books, you need to get it on paper and in the reader's hands, which means you have to finish it. So yeah. don't get stuck in that cycle of I got to add one more thing. I got to add one more thing before you know it. It's two, three, five years later, and you're still adding that one more thing. And again, I don't, I'll find the, the, uh, the uh, person who said it first and, and attribute this quote, but it's, you cannot edit a blank page. So it has to, you have to get the words onto the paper. I have to remind myself of that frequently. <laughs> So that was uh, yeah. day 27, where you have to find out why you don't want to finish if you're that person who's getting stuck or who's continuing going back, continuing to go back and rewrite. So moving on to um, day 28, you're doing your final story check. Something I just thought of when, that I want to point out, I'm not talking about your edits, Oh, right? Because your edits, there are some publishers, if you're going the traditional route, and you're going to, you're not going to indie and you're not going to do it yourself and you're going to go out and give it to a publisher and see if they'll print it for you. Um, some publishers, I was on a, I was watching a panel and there was a couple of editors who were with publishing houses and they said the first question they asked the writers is how many times have you edited this? And some of them were like, if it hasn't been edited at least 10 times, I don't even want to look at it. So I'm not talking about edits. I'm talking about your actual writing of the story, mm -hmm. right? That's what I'm talking about. Wrap it up and start your edits. Yep. So, sorry, I wanted to point that out. No problem. Because uh, editing is going to be a bear. I'm just saying. Yeah, truth, truth. 
All right. <laughs> um, you're doing your final story check where you're checking it over your whole book. And I really, um, that is, I mean, that grid that she puts in the back, that is masterful. I mean, they all are. Um, this Dr. Victoria Lynn Schmidt is, uh, she knows her stuff and she's got some great things in here. This, this book is really full of, of exercises and things that will help you with your book. Um, so she has you check over, um, how does the story feel to you if, even before you reread it and are all of your genre elements in place if you're writing a genre book and, um, what do you like about your story and how will your readers feel? So a lot of those questions and did you resolve? And we talked a lot about that. Um, does each of your acts have a clear beginning? Stuff, stuff like that. So that's day 28. Yep. Um, and then 29, um, the objective is to keep writing and figure out what you're going to do next. Um, she also points out, <clears throat> which I can say from experience that this is very important, should always back up your work. She always have copies of your work. I um, started writing um, a YA a couple of years ago. I don't have it anymore. I don't know where it went. I don't know what happened to it. We've checked all the hard drives. I didn't print it out apparently. Oh. Like can't find it anywhere. Um, I can still tell you the gist of what I was writing and the name of the main character. I actually made character cards. So I have, I still have all my character cards, but the actual work is gone. No mm -hmm. idea what I'm doing. Now, when I write, I write and then I print. <laughs> I write and then I print. <laughs> And we have um, a separate hard drive that once a week, everything goes on um, so that this doesn't happen again. So make sure you have copies, you back up, because um, I can tell you from experience, it is horrible feeling okay. when you realize you've done all this work and you have nothing to show for it. So, wow. Yeah. That is a cautionary tale for sure. All right. So, all right, day 30. day 30. How are we wrapping it up? Celebrate your success. Woohoo, you finish. <laughs> and review the process. Review um, if you, as you go back and look back at your experience with book in a month, what worked for you and what didn't. Um, you're going to uh, want to highlight that or make a note of that. Um, I did that on, let's see. Well, there's a, there's a sticky note, a, a long sticky note in here about what worked for me and what didn't, so that when I use the book in a month process again, I can, I will probably, unless I'm in a different place in my writing, that sounded a little pompous, I will, oh, there, there it is. So there's one of my sticky notes for um, that whole week or the book. Um, and she gives you a chart to fill in. Yep, which is handy. And do make sure you celebrate your success. Um, getting to, I, I kind of think be, um, being a project manager um, that you should celebrate, not just getting to the end of the book, you should celebrate getting the end to, to the end of act one. You should celebrate getting 5,000 words down. You should celebrate- your Milestones. Yeah, the milestones along the way as well. But definitely make sure that if when you get to the end of book in a month, and this process, and even if you don't have the word count you want, but you've done all the exercises, that's a lot of work. So make yeah. sure to celebrate that. Great. And after the fact, so like when you're done writing, you're not done, right? You have to do your first edit and your second edit and your 10th edit. Your alpha reader has to read it and make sure that you didn't miss anything. And then you have to do any edits that they're suggesting. And then you have to send it to your beta readers readers yeah and you get all of their information right because now you have all these other eyes so now you have to to do that and then you have to so each step along the way along the entire process make sure you celebrate it or you could be like some people who lose interest if there's no excitement left in it yeah right so make sure you're like woo alpha reader woo beta readers woo got my cover art right? All of the steps along the way, which cover art is a big deal, by the way, has nothing to do with this book, but make sure your cover art is good because some people, no matter how good the book 
sounds, if the picture on the front of the book is not engaging me in some way, yep. the likelihood of me grabbing that book is not very high. I, it needs, to, okay, so here's an example. I have no idea what, what this book is about, none whatsoever. I picked it up for those little free library things on the side of the, like in front of someone's house. The Woman in Cabin 10, okay? No idea what the, this book about, but somehow this picture captured my, like, oh, okay. That actually looks like it could be really good. It's an ocean, it's the rain, it's the peephole of a cruise ship, right? So this tells me it's going to, you know what I mean? This tells me so much about the book without actually knowing what the book is going to be about, right? Um, if this had been, the picture had been a, a boat on the water, I wouldn't have grabbed it. Yeah. If it was just a boat on the water, right? So keep in mind that you, you have an idea of what you want it to look like, but put yourself in your reader's place. Is the picture that you put on the front of the book and the spine of the book, because sometimes this is all they're gonna see, mm -hmm. right? So make sure it's all the things. So, sorry, that was not supposed to be part of this, but it made me re realize that cover art is really, she didn't talk about that in this book, but cover art is really important. It is, we should probably do an episode about that, get one of, cause there are some books that help authors to um, do or know what to choose for covers. But um, speaking of covers, um, let's finish between the covers of book. <laughs> I was like, where are we going with this? <laughs> let's go back here. Actually, speaking of covers, I mean, this one did actually attract me when I first looked at the book. So book in a month, that's like, uh-huh, yeah, right. But when you look at that and it's like, well, okay, there's there's a plan to do every, all, all these things in checking off. In her all. tagline. Yeah. Awesome. Full crew. Yeah. It, the foolproof proof system for writing a novel in 30 days. Okay, sign me up. Yeah. So, all that stuff is important. So you have wrapped up um, playing along at home. Um, how far did you guys get? You guys um, who were playing along at home or did you just decide from watching these videos that you are actually going to go out and buy the book in a month? Please um, do. Please do. And uh, so, yeah, send us uh, some comments or some notes. On, on what you thought or what you think of book in a month. Um, so that is a wrap. Um, I wrote down some extra notes here. So who is book in a month for? I think it's for, um, you can be a beginning writer or you could be uh, an experienced author looking for different methodology or different ways to approach parts of your writing. Um, if you're going to do NaNoWriMo, this is a great preptober. Uh, what you can do in October. This is a great book for Preptober. It's also a great book uh, for keeping you on track during NaNoWriMo if you're not going to pants the entire month or if you want some guardrails to help you along with doing your 50,000 words in the month of November for NaNoWriMo. Um, so I'd recommend the book. I enjoyed it. I did learn some things and um, I We'll be using a lot of these exercises as I go through to do the edits on my book because it made me think about different chapters or just different ways to look at my villain that maybe I hadn't. I thought I had done the work to make my villain three-dimensional, but um, in other books or other with my other book, A Work in Progress, but when I read the uh, exercises or questions she asked, it's like, oh my gosh, did I give them any motivation beyond blank, you know? So um, some great stuff in here. Anything, uh, any last thoughts about book in a month from you, Amy? I like that she does give you those, those guardrails and along the way, she's like, hey, don't forget about this. Like, I know we're working on this, but don't forget about this. Like she helps you along the process and keeps you from going off on all those rabbit trails. Yeah. Right. Oh, this would be a good idea. Uh, does it have anything to do with what you're writing? Right. So um, I like that she did that. I will be using some of these charts, except I, I won't fill in the charts in the book. I mean, I made notes in the book um, because 
what will happen for me? It's also the same reason I don't read in the genre that I'm writing in at the time that I'm writing it, mm -hmm. because things that I'm reading will influence what I'm writing. So I won't actually write anything about my book in here, because if I go back to read over it, I'll read everything in the book, including my notes. So um, I'll use her charts. I'll just use them outside of the book. And I like that she has, that she's broken it down and helps you remember all the things. Yeah. And I guess the only other thing I want to point out is make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs> we haven't said that yet today. Wow, that was smooth, Amy. <laughs> Well done, you. <laughs> All right, that's it for us uh, for uh, The Right Crowd and for Book in a Month. Uh, tune in for our next episode. We'll be talking about uh, something related to the author world or we'll be talking about our next book. Oh, and what is our next book? Because we haven't said yet. I thought we had. We didn't tell did you we? yet. Uh, maybe we did. I don't remember. Let's say it again, just in case. And where's it at? Mine's right here. Let me see if I can reach it without, without. Mine's over there in my backpack. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Dun, da, da. The anatomy. John Truby, the anatomy of story. Yes, you know what I think we did because I kept wanting to call it the story of anatomy. This is not, this is not a science book. <laughs> Although it is thick. It's it so is the science of reading and it's, it's little teeny tiny print. Yeah. But it's. This one's gonna, this one's gonna um, throw some curveballs at us. So get ready. Yeah. yeah. So go get your copy. And Audrey and I get to meet this guy in yes. November when we go to 20 books for 50K. 20 books to 50K. Yes. And uh, one other thing, if uh, you have that book or you are, um, are gonna get that book to uh, play along at home, um, we'll be doing some sessions on um, Clubhouse. If you're watching this far in the future, um, just enjoy the, the ride of the uh, YouTube episodes. But if you're watching this in real real time while we're, we're, we're recording them, uh, join us on Clubhouse at The Right Crowd. So, yes. Thank you. That's it. Bye.